Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today is going to be a surprise video using the gorgeously made bundle, the gorgeously made stamp set, and the gorgeously made dies. And I'm saying it's a surprise because we're going to be making it and then you're going to see what I make. So you can see um, I've already done a stitched, stylish stylish shape stitched circle here and this is going to go on the outside of a bag we're going to make that we're going to put six to eight cards in but i'm going to show you how you can do that with this beautifully um, masterfully made dsp <clears throat> this paper has <clears throat> excuse me has some beautiful bright colors in it and it has um, the colors of pumpkin pie crushed curry lemon lime twist pretty peacock we've got asia afternoon granny apple green so all these beautiful patterns as you can see fronts and backs and i have them listed uh, i mean not listed but i have them shown this way this is the back that's the back then we've got the back here and ah, my fingers aren't working right then we've got another pretty color there with another fun background stamp uh, not stamped, but background paper. Another pretty floral pattern here with the fresh freesia in it. And the pretty peacock. Oh, it's so beautiful. So we are going to be using that paper to make a beautiful gift bag to put cards in. And as I said, we've got Asia Afternoon, Berry Burst, Crushed Curry, Fresh Freesia, Lemon Lime Twist, Lemon Lolly, Lost Lagoon, Melon Mambo, Night of Navy, Pretty Peacock, Pumpkin Pie, and Sweet Sorbet. Oh my gosh, that's sweet sorbet in there, I just realized. But there's some melon mambo in there too. So such a pretty, pretty paper. So we are going to be making a bag and let's get started. So I'm going to show you how we are going to make a bag with this 12 by 12. This piece here is what makes our bag. So we have to have two pieces of 10 by eight. But I'm gonna show you how you can use your I don't, I hopefully you can see this. So it's, um, I need to see my camera. So I have my, I could put it up higher, but this is a 12 by 12 and we're gonna have this piece left over and this piece left over when we cut. So you can see, we're gonna take two inches off the side and then we're going to have this piece left over and this is what we're gonna make our bag. So we need two of these. Therefore, we're gonna use two pieces of DSP to get these pieces to make our bag. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is show you how we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna take my, I'm, I'm just going to cut, cut one right now because you would be cutting two, okay? But I already have this piece cut because I use these pieces on the cards I'm gonna show you. So normally, if you were gonna make this card and use um, a different DSP, maybe the uh, let's go fishing DSP, or maybe it would be the um, that beautiful uh, blue one we have now. The uh, I can't think of it right now. <laughs> um, but you might be using a different DSP, but you need two of the matching ones, and it's nice if they can coordinate nicely because you're going to bend over a lip on your bag. So we want to get this piece cut out of a 12 by 12. So what we're going to do is get out our trimmer or your scoring tool. I'm gonna to use my scoring tool. I'm gonna to show you how we're gonna do this. I'm getting out my scoring tool. I have a 12 by 12 piece. Now this paper is directional. The flowers are iffy on the direction, but you can see in here, there's a little typeset print throughout this paper. So that's gonna make it directional on this card. So that's gonna determine, but if you just have a random pattern, you're not gonna to have to worry about the direction, but I am worrying about the direction here. So as you can see, I'm gonna take off the two. I do need my trimmer actually, not my scoring tool. I don't need this yet. I was correct. So my trimmer, let's get the trimmer. I was wondering why do I have my trimmer out? Okay, so we are going to directionally, um, Keep our paper this way, and we wanna cut this two inches off, okay? So we are going to cut this last two inches off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn it upside down. Well, no, I don't really actually. Yes, I, yes, I do, because I want that two inches. So I'm gonna put this two inches. Now remember, I turned it upside down because it's directional, okay? Now I'm going to cut off two inches 
okay? And then I'm gonna set this piece aside here for a second. Okay, now I'm gonna pull my paper back and take and just make sure I'm doing this correctly. So I've cut this two inches off. Now I need, so that's gonna give me 10, 10 inches to work with for our bag, because our bag is 10 inches across. Okay, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> so we're going to, yes, two, three, seven, eight, Bum, bum, bum. Yes, that's the way it goes to how, um, I just want to measure this part here. Four, that's six, eight, yes, okay, here we go. All right, so here we go, we are going, I just wanna make sure I, before I cut into this beautiful paper. So now we need to take off the top four inches of this paper. So I'm going to turn it this way but my direction is going this way, so I have to actually turn it this way, okay, and take off four inches, okay, take off four inches. Now, I have the piece I need here. It measures 10 by eight. Now, notice I have these two scrumptious pieces of paper, ample paper to make some beautiful cards. And whatever paper you end up using, you're gonna be able to use these two pieces of leftover paper to make four different cards. But remember, we're doing two pieces of paper, so you're gonna be able to make eight cards. So let's take a look at making this bag now. So we have our two pieces that we cut from two pieces of 12 by 12. So these are our bag pieces, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring back my, let's put this paper up here. I'm gonna bring back my scoring tool just because it uh, is real super easy to do this. Now, the top part of my bag is going to have a lip on it. And that lip that I want on my bag, now this is a perfect size bag to make and put your A2 sized cards in because you can put them in landscape. Okay, so that's why I made this particular template this way. You might see other bags made on other uh, people demonstrating bags, but this is a perfect template to use for your A2 size cards. Okay, so I'm gonna want a one inch lip to fold over at the top. So that means I'm gonna take, make sure I'm directional and I'm gonna turn this way and I'm going to score, I like to use my small ball there. I'm gonna score at one, okay? That's the lip that goes folded down. Now the rest of the sides on both sides and the bottom are going to be two inches. So they're gonna be two, two, and two. So I just turn it this way. Now remember, I did the one inch here because this is the direction. This is the bottom of my bag, this is the top. So then I can just turn it any way and go two inches. Two inches. two inches, and then my last two inches, okay? That's going to be my first part of my bag, so let's do it again, reviewing again. Remember your paper, you want your 10 inch side, that's gonna be the side, the, 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 your, the, the width of your bag, okay? So I this is the top part of my bag, so I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did, I did a one inch lip. You can make this lip any that you want, but it worked well with my dimensions because I wanted to use these leftover strips to make cards. So then I just turn it again to two inches and do two inches and do another two inches. Okay, so now I have my two pieces of my bag. I can sit this over there and now I have my two pieces of my bag. These are going to be the pieces that fold down and I knew I needed to uh, change my blade there. So I'm just going to fold these over so you can tell which sides are which. So these are going to be the two sides that the two parts that flip down from the top of the bag. So what you're going to want to do on one of them is this is the way it's going to be, go the bag is going to be going together and as you can see you could do it the opposite way because, ooh, that would be really pretty too, having your bag like this. 
Oh, that is pretty. Maybe I'll have to do that on another one. Okay, but I really like that floral pattern there. So I'm just showing you how this is going to go together here. So we're, we've got all of our score lines, one piece, and the score lines here. Okay, now those are our two pieces of our, oh, that got me nervous. I was like, why is that like that? Okay, there there and I'm just playing around with my score lines now so these are the two pieces that are going to be our bag now I'm going to show you on a sample one that I did beforehand is we're going to have to make two pieces that fit together okay and to do that one of your pieces you're going to cut out these two you're going to cut out these two squares at the bottom so I'm going to get my bigger scissors here and that would be on here and here. So we're gonna wanna cut right on those score lines. And I wanna see that I'm right on the score line. Sometimes it is a little easier if you draw a mark where you're at. There we go. And I'm just using that scored line and on the inside of the bag. Notice I just made a little, little. This is because I, it's hard to see that score line. Okay, so this is a little trick of how you can see. Okay, so those are our lines and I'm going to cut right on that line. And this is just on one piece. Okay, we're gonna cut that. Okay, now this is gonna be a bottom flap here. So we're just gonna go um, on the one piece, we're just gonna make this little triangle here and we're gonna cut out a little bit of that so it tucks in there um, snugly and not, uh, not too bulkly. Bulkily, is that a word, bulkily? <laughs> you don't want the bulk there. So that's one piece of our bag, okay? We just took out the corners, okay? Now on this one, we are going to want to cut up just from the bottom, okay? Oh no, we are cutting from, we're looking at it here and we're cutting on the sides, okay? So we're gonna cut in on these sides. So I'm folding this again so I can see where I'm cutting. There we go. And making that nice crease and then just sticking my pen in the, that crease, feeling where it is. Okay. So now we're going in to this side. We're not taking this whole thing out. We're just cutting here so that we're gonna make a flap. Making sure I'm doing that correctly. Okay, so once you get the hand handle of this, they are so quick and easy to make. I just want to make sure I don't make any mistakes. Not only so I don't teach you incorrectly, but also so I don't mess up this beautiful paper. So you can see now we're going to make a box like this, and then this one is going to fit right in there and make a beautiful box. So the way to do that is to take and put this little flap here that, oh, I'm gonna bring over some more light here. This little flap and put it right in, slid into the bottom there, okay? But before we do that, I want to tape these down. So let's get my Stamp and Seal Plus and just go down there and do our flap down and also on this side as well. Some people have such a great knack at doing that. Okay, so now we have our two pieces and we're gonna put this piece in. And you can see, you can just match up the, the, the edges here and you'll know you're right where you need to be. So that means we're gonna put some adhesive down here. Okay, so once again, just 
butt those up against each other. And then make sure your two edges, hopefully you can see that edge there and that edge there are put together nice and tight. And then when you know, you can just feel that they're there and that's the bottom, okay? So you can see now we've made our bag. See, isn't that cool? Okay, so now we need to just get these flaps up. Okay, so we want to make sure that we put the rough edges at the same place. Now this is the rough edge here that we, um, it's on the piece that had the cutout here. So this is the rough edge. So that means we want this piece to be rough here too, rough, rough, rough. So just be aware that you wanna make those, those pieces rough. So we're gonna put some adhesive on here because when you go to put your cards in, you want them to not uh, be hitting this part here. So we're gonna go ahead and put some adhesive on here. And it's of course gonna be on the out, like kind of like the outside, the part that's facing down on your craft table. And then remember what I said, this is gonna be going this way because rough edge, rough edge. So this is gonna fold right in there and we're just adhering it together there. And if you want, you can snip off a little of the corner, but I find that they are pretty, uh, they are pretty precise there. And then we're putting this one here and this one here. So what we're gonna do there is just put some tear and tape on here. That seems to be the easiest way to do that. So I'm just going to put some tear and tape on this edge. And the reason why it's tear and tape is you can just tear and tape. I think it should be tape and tear. Okay, I feel the score line there. There we go. And then a piece here. Make sure you're not on the score line. Just keep your eye on that corner there. And then you'll put Scoring there, and then just grab a little pokey. Now I do see that I have a little bit of tape there. So then just, you're going to tear off the adhesive top here. There we go. There we go. And another piece. Yeah, this is like, yes, it's using two pieces of DSP, but those two pieces of DSP get you a beautiful gift bag and eight cards that you can make. Okay, let's just cooperate here. Oh, I thought I was on a roll there. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking whenever you use a big piece of DSP, now, if you have a lot, uh, do I have a lot? Yes, I probably could wallpaper all the houses on my street with my DSP. <laughs> but um, this is really cool because all the cards that go in this gift bag have this paper on it. So now we're going to just fold this over, line up, and remember, see how those rough edges? And we're just going to make sure our top part of our bag is flush. And there is one corner. And, oh, this paper is so pretty. So, so pretty. At first I wondered, what am I gonna do with it? And then, whoop, I got it. And then we'll get. And like I said, the biggest thing I think with this, making this bag is just make sure all your rough edges. And how do you know you want the person not to see the rough edges? That's where we're gonna put a beautiful little tag on the front of it that says for you. Ta-da. Okay. Now we need to get some handles on our bag. Now the quick way to do that is just to make yourself a template. I cut a piece and as long as I put it up in the corner here and do a hole punch, I will have no problem. I'm going to use my crocodile. So I'm just going to kind of put that in the, and the first punch, it doesn't matter. 
because you're going to use this template. And I'm just gonna put it like right there, okay? Now, because I already have this template made, all I have to do is put it over here and I know it's gonna be the exact place as the other side. This is a trick I learned a while ago and then my friend Karen Titus reminded me of it. Okay, another hole. Now let's go over here. What is, oh my gosh, you know what happened? This crocodile cut twice. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Oh, be careful that you don't do this. I had, I actually had it both pieces in. Oh my goodness gracious. If you have a crocodile, don't do that. It just actually went like this and two pieces, two, oh golly. Okay, now make sure it's not doing that. I was wondering, how are there holes on that? I didn't demonstrate this yet. Okay, there. Well, may, oh, darn it. That was crazy. Oh, well. Hey, at least it's on the back side. <laughs> okay, I might have to figure out how to. There, big piece. I was doing really well, don't you guys think? Until that little snafu. Now see, see, oop. I, it's going in the other side, so I need to go in. I need to go like that and make sure. Now, if you're not using a crocodile, you wouldn't have that problem, but I did. Oh my golly. Okay, now this is bothering me, but you know what? Look at this piece that we cut off. So I'm gonna put that piece, I'm gonna fix my little bag. Always, like nobody's gonna notice this one here, but this is bothering me. So what I'm gonna do is cut myself a little piece of this purple and I will put some glue over that hole and then I'm going to cover it with this purple. Make sure you do the purple, Cindy. Oh, now that's weird because the purple and it's purple and purple, purple. Okay, so what we're gonna do here I'm, I'm determined to show you how I fix all my mistakes. So we're going to, let's see, let's cut this big enough that we can fold it over because purple and purple. So that means we have to get a little bit of, ah, that means we have to get a little bit of glue there to fold that over. So we have purple, and now we can put that piece in there and cover up the mistake, because I didn't like seeing that. Yeah, we fixed it, because this is the good side with our two holes there. And what we're gonna do is put some ribbon in that, but right now I want to get to our heart. So we made this lovely little box, okay. And once again, all we did was take a 12 by 12 and we needed two 8 by 10 pieces to make the bag. So as you can see, if you have two 12 by 12s, you ended up having this 2 inch strip by 12 and this 4 by 10 left over. So let me show you what I did. Now this piece here okay let's work with this piece first okay so what I did is this was four by ten I cut this in half to make it four by five okay and that four by five left me with look at this Think of it this way, you've got the four by 10, that leaves me two, four by two and a half. And then I have these pieces left over. But with these, this piece here, oh, I should have taken pictures of these before I did this. But, oh well, 
I'll show how to do that. Okay, so what I did is I put those on a gatefold card. Okay, so the gatefold card is simply an 11 by four and a quarter, and you score in two and three quarters on each side so that you have the inside that's gonna be five and a half by four and a quarter. And then you are able to pop on these two pretty pieces that are two and a half by four. Oh darn, I'm really wishing that I would have, um, I would have taken a picture of that uh, before I started. But, okay. Yeah, so there we go. So we have our two, oh, yep, uh, yeah, it's, I was like, did I put it on right? Yes, the writing is all going the same way. So those are your two pieces there. And then I just mounted a, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right here. There we go. Gonna kind of make that, whoop, I just messed that up because I used the wrong side. Okay. Um, okay, I messed that up because I, so that's just gonna bother me. So let's, uh, let me get the stylish shapes because this is going to bother the heck out of me. Okay, let's just pretend that this piece went on here. But I, like I said, I put the, uh, glue on the wrong side and it's my pet peeve whenever you get the wrong side so that's going to go there and then we are going to put two of the pretty foliages there I put, picked out the white and the granny apple green oh and the lemon lime twist I'm sorry lemon lime twist I told you before and so then I just did the you are a great friend and that makes that card so pop back onto my blog to see the pictures of this card. CindyLeeBDesigns.com underneath the YouTube description has visit my blog here. Just press that button and it takes you right over to CindyLeeBDesigns.com. So that's the first card. So let me put this back and I'll show you the next one I am making here. Okay. Ta-da! This is my new way of keeping things together. Okay, so this other piece here, now remember we used these two pieces, and then we had left over another four by five. So what I did is I cut that in half again, and I got two and a half and two and a half. And for this card, I took this four by two and a half inch piece, and I cut it into four one inch pieces that were two and a half. So I had two and a half, cut it down, and then I just mounted it on fresh freesia and white. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, and then I'm able to see both really pretty patterns. This is irritating me there. Okay, so these little strips are two and a half by one and I just alternated the pattern. Actually, I usually should, should be okay there. I usually go from top to bottom because of, uh, then you can like, it, it's easier to see the, make sure you have the right Okay, hopefully that one, and then put this one in the middle. This is a cute little trick. Uh, you can do this with three by th uh, six by six piece of paper and cut it three, three by three, and cut it down to one by threes. And then you could have a blank space to put a sentiment, but I liked it because I could show off both sides of the DSP to match the bag. Okay, since this was two and a half, this is two and three quarters, and I made this three and a quarter. And then this was, I do believe, I'm not gonna give you the wrong measurements, 
It was, uh, the white is four and a half, which makes the fresh freesia four and three quarters. And once again, all of those measurements are underneath the YouTube description, but they're also on my blog. So we're gonna border the white with fresh freesia. Look at that beautiful designer series paper. We're going to pop that onto a berry burst background. I chose to use berry burst for all of my card bases. It just looked more uniform. I was playing around with mixing and matching colors and then I just decided to do it that way. So we've got a pretty card there and then I'm gonna fiddly around with this and I just used white and crushed curry colors that are in that and then I did a little hello. Now the way I did the little hello is, I'll show a picture on my blog, but I took the fun die that's in that set, the cinnamon one, and you first cut, and I'll have a picture of this, but you first cut one side of your cinnamon. So you'll cut that side out, okay? And you've got this all, and then you just come back after you've cut that long strip and you have that blank part and you cut the second part. And I show you on um, my blog post how that, how you die cut that on the stamp and cut and box machine, die cutting machine. So that is gonna be our second card. And once again, I'm gonna have all of these cards done for you on my blog. So that was, where did I put this? Okay. So let's look again. These two here, we had two and a half, two and a half. Those are right here. This two and a half came from this piece. Now we have another two and a half left over. And what I did with that one is I cut it down. It fit in this two and a half inch section and I made a fun card. And this one I have a video already done on it so I can show you how that happens. And I just put, cut these with the deckled rectangles and just layered them on. I'm just gonna show you real quick here. And you'll notice on this one, so you have that pretty layering of the card. I think I did the, no, I did them right, that's right. Or, yeah, that's right, okay. Now notice here I was able to mix and match the colors um, on here again like I did on that last card. And for this what this piece here came from this piece here, okay? So I cut this one down here, I cut it down to five and a quarter so it fit on my card base here. And then I just shaved off, actually not shaved because it's, a, it's an eighth. So I brought it down to one and seven eighths to put on here so that it would fit in this two and an eighth inch portion. And then I used, so now this makes the third card, okay? Make sure your writing is going the right way if you're using this actual DSP in these colors here. So there is another card. And as I said before, I made this card um, style on my blog and I'll link to that. But you then have some more pretty, I used only the skinny ones here. I didn't use this bigger white one because it just took up too much room. And then I, Oh, this was a perfect example to show how we did that die. Um, Cause that one is big, but I didn't cut that one down because I'm gonna lay my flowers on that section, the stem. So once I cut this piece, when you go back, you just pop that in there and run it through and it'll cut that matching side over. So that is what I did for that one. And um, the reason I didn't cut it out is I'm just gonna put that under and do some kind of fancy put together like that. So there you've used one, two, two pieces for one card, one section for a third card, I mean a second card, and that was your third card using that section and half of this piece. Now we have one more card to do. And this one uses a really fun die that's in this set here. 
It's that torn notebook edge. And you know, I ran this through and I kept thinking I was messing up, but then I realized these little pieces here that aren't perfect is because neither is it when you rip out the notebook paper. So what I did is I literally took the leftover piece of two inch by, I mean the two inch by five and a quarter, I cut it down and I put it on here. And then I used that fancy edge on the die. So I just made this two and a half and kept the die super close to the edge. And then I could put this on and have a peacock border on each side. So that makes your fourth card using the leftover scraps. So let's just see if I can get a little bit of a border. I wanna make sure I don't cover up that stitching cause that is super cool. And then that is going to be what goes on here. And we might may as well glue that down. And I just played around when I was doing this card with all the different uh, whites, lemon lime twist, crushed curry. Make sure I have this straight there. Okay. This one I decided because I wanted to see this pretty floral pattern, so I just put a piece of vellum. Now with vellum, it's a little tricky. I do have this vellum adhesive runner made by ThermoWeb. I've tried to find it. I cannot find it anywhere. This time I'm gonna make sure I'm doing it on the right side. It really is see-through, but like, I literally haven't been able to find it for years, but it has a real see-through effect. You can barely see it but I wanted to be able to see the flowers. And then I put a big piece of white. I didn't mind putting the white on there cause the white pulls out of there. And then that great sentiment, you are a great friend. On the outside of the bag, I used um, a sentiment from the Lasting Joy set because that sentiment was kind of similar to the type set. And because it's on the outside, you won't notice it doesn't go. But that is our fourth card. So. Let's do a little quick recap here. So we ended up with just this leftover. So we had this leftover when we cut down what we needed for the bag. We had a two inch by 12 and we had a four inch by 10, okay? That gave us enough to make all of our cards. We had two, two and a half by fours. Then we used, I'm gonna put these on, here we go. Then we used a two and a half by four here. Then we used the fourth two and a half by four to cut that out. So one, two, three, four, made three cards out of this piece here, this four by 10. Then we had this piece left over, that two by 12, and we cut it down into two five and a quarter inch pieces. We put one of them on here. We used the two inch one, and then we cut down a two inch piece down to one and seven eighths to put onto this one. So just that scraps there made these four different cards here. Let's see, I'll make sure I can get these in. I am looking to get a new camera because this one is always wobbling around on me. So I think you can see all, all of those right now. So you've got these four cards. Now remember, we had to cut two pieces of this DSP to make this bag. So that meant we had double the amount, okay? So because we had double the amount, we actually can make eight cards. What a lovely gift to give somebody, a gift bag with, <laughs> with eight cards in it. So that would be a pretty way to decorate the outside of it. Now I'm going to pop this stuff off of here because I'm going to show you what I did. Ah. Now, where did this go with this? No, this goes with this. As you can imagine, 
I would have put all this, I'm gonna decorate the inside. So this gives you a reason to pop over to my blog and see all of these finished cards because we will be here all day if I do this. Okay, I just want to show you this bag and realize that there's berry burst in there, right? We have some really pretty berry burst ribbons that were left over from, and I think we have a lemon lime twist too. Is this lemon lime twist? Yes. So we've got some pretty ribbons that are retired, but when you bring back a color, you may still have the ribbons. I don't get rid of them. So look how pretty. You could use the seam binding on here, or you could use this retired. Now, of course, if you're looking for current and you don't have retired, you could use any kind of white because white is in there. This is berry burst as well. This would make a really pretty, a very pretty uh, handle on here and also the lemon lime twist. And all you would do is figure out how big you want your little handles to be. Probably about that big, okay? So let's just measure how big that would be. And that would be about 12 inches. So let's measure 12 inches. 12 inches, get my scissors out here, make them the same size, okay, there we go. You can decide if you want the handles this way or you want two to hold up this way. So since I measured this way, I'm probably going to do it this way, or do you want it to hang down this way? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. So you're going to put your piece in here and tie yourself a little knot. And like I said, I just happen to have this retired berry burst ribbon because I throw nothing away. Probably why I'm tripping over everything in my craft room. <laughs> so let's try to get it as tight to the end as we can so that we have a matching amount on each side. But before you tie the knot, make sure you've put it through the hole. <laughs> so I'm looking and then I'm gonna hopefully get, I'm sure there's a little trick to know exactly how far you're doing this to. Okay, get that little piece there. And like I said, I'm just doing as tight as I can to the edge. Oh, I got some dirty fingers from my glue today. Okay, so I've got this little knot here. Okay, and that's gonna go there and it looks to be about the same size. Just trim off any of these little fibers that come from your ribbon. And you've got one and then you can do another one. You could also tie these on the outside depending on how what look you want. If you want the ribbon to look that you can see the tie on the outside or the inside, either way. But you'll do that on both sides. And then I'm going to show you how you can fit eight cards in there. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Seven, eight. Okay. So I have seven, I have eight cards here. Now look how beautifully those eight cards fit in there. Put a little ruffled, and guess what? I have something else fun to show you. You could either put um, some crunch, scrunchy, and one thing that's cool about never, never throwing anything away. If you still have this shreddy from when Berry Burst was uh, a color, an in color, you can actually use some of this to put into your bag. But isn't this cool how it fits perfectly? It's so sturdy. And then you have two little handles on there. You put your gift on there and you have got a fun gift. Uses two pieces of, two pieces of 12 by 12. 
I'll have a good picture of this for you. You need this piece here to make the bag, two of them. You have two of these left over and you can make four cards from these two. And then you'll have a duplicate size because you need two of these. You can make eight cards and plop them in that cute little bag. So make sure you ju uh, jump over to cindyleebdesigns.com, subscribe so you get notified each time I post, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or any other time we have a special going on. I like to do a YouTube video on Wednesdays for you posted. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Look how pretty, you could even put this offset down here. So I have all of this finished up for you. So hop over to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com and you can see the finished products, projects using all the products that I used. Thanks for buzzing by friends.